Hello, this is the challenge 4 video for the 2022 holiday hack challenge. This is the last challenge that you need to solve in order to get the token ring. So let's see how it's done. Alright, so we left off with the Windows Event Lock challenge and we need to find our next objective. Talking to uh, Fitzy and Actually, instead of talking to Fitzy, I do recommend talking to Dusty again because Dusty is going to give us a very, very useful hint. And this hint is pointing us to the Suricata documentation. And we will use this one. Some of the early steps of the challenge does not require us really to look into the documentation. Later ones, Actually, I have to look it up because I'm not writing Suricata rules every day and um, they will ask you to use some Suricata specific terms for the rules. Alright, so this is a challenge with a difficulty of 3. I think that is pretty much aligned with the, the, uh, the challenge level. We haven't looked at, by the way, the other ones. Fireshark was only one little Christmas tree and then Event Logs was two and Suricata is three. So it's increasing in difficulty and I think these are really well aligned uh, with the challenges themselves. All right, so let's jump right into it, figuratively, literally speaking. There's also this, um, what's the name of this thing? Uh, Snowrog, yeah, of course, that the elves uh, managed to wake up because they were digging deeper and deeper with their tunnels um <laughs> i think the the storyline here is quite obvious All right so let's see what let's see has to say about the challenge here just quickly going to click through it and basically um it's um some sort of enchantation that we need to uncover well basically we just need to write sort of our rules here so here in the terminal now, this is a little bit uh, weird, I think, in certain cases. When you open up the terminal, you get the challenge unlock, and it's kind of annoying. Well, opening the terminal another time uh, should give you a nice, clean place to work with. And it's still going to be with the suspicious PCAP file here, but this time we're going to develop Suricata rules. There's this rule checker script which basically will decide whether your rule is what they expect to see and has the, the expected result or not. They also provide you with um, a few sample rules and to create a backup actually we can just add additional rules here. This is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take a couple shortcuts here just to speed things up. And the first task is to write a rule that will catch DNS lookups to this domain. And this is the message that we need to print out. Now, if you look at uh, the Suricata rules, well, I can just probably add them out here. Let's clear this one. We see that we have one, two, three, four, five alerts altogether, I believe. Let's check it in another way. Okay, actually a bit more, so I kind of missed a, a few here. Two for HTTP IP. There's one for DNS, which can be quite useful for us as a starting point. So I do recommend just grabbing a rule from a rule set, maybe, or a rule that someone else wrote and um, use it as a starting point. You can also write it from scratch. In that case, you really have to start with uh, just the, the basic tags here, like um, the ID value, revision number, and maybe a message, and then try to add the actual detection content. But I'm just going to use this already existing rule. And I'm going to add this to the bottom. So let's say first, rule and then uh, go shift B is to paste it in. So revision number is going to be one. Uh, you have to pick a unique identifier here. So let's take the 311 B. Sorry, that's not the right number. 
one two three seven yeah that's the that's the correct lead number over there no keys so not key sensitive the content here for the dns query part is um let's see notes i'm going to paste this one in so this domain here i believe we saw this one during the bioshark challenge and then the message part um is different here just going to create this this is from the et rule set apparently okay still a few actors to go and the message is um, this one here home net to any other i think it's good enough probably it works with any any but let's go with home net and then rule checker is the script that you need to run this tells us that the first rule looks good and they give us our second task for the second rule so this one is um, going to ask you to alert on any communication to this IP address over HTTP. Again, we can take a shortcut here. And look at the rules if they have a nice and simple HTTP. But this one looks for some type of file here. Um, PNG, one, one by one pixel PNG uh, images. But it's a good starting point, so I'm going to copy this one. Use nano to edit the rule file. Second rule. I need to paste this one in. Revision one, that's fine. I'm just going to increment our lead number. And we can get rid of pretty much any match here. So we're just going to have a rule with a message. Hmm. Just find a message here. Investigate suspicious connection. Possible Drydex infection. All right http any any and instead of any uh we need to have that ip address that was provided for us let me just call this one Go here and initially you might think that this is enough but a rule checker will say that they we flagged four five four packets but the expected one was six eight one um so we're missing a couple of packets here now if you read more carefully here um they don't say that they only want to have one direction of the communication so here this is any communication coming from this address to anything and if you just swap this like this um and this should fix it there it is second rule is good so you need to pay attention that you want to uh, alert on any communication either a client establishes it or probably this address externally will not reach into our network hopefully that's not going to be a connection that you observe you can also swap the the direction of the rule and just say anything that communicates to this one and probably you don't need the, the bidirectional nature doesn't really matter uh, with a rule that is bidirectional you'll match on any traffic all right so the third rule is matching on a specific common name a common name with this one in the certificate details and this is the point where the hints really becomes valuable of course you can also just search for the suricata documentation and we want to go to the SLTLS keywords part. Now, this is quite easy because uh, the first, um, the first um, uh, matching item here uh, that they explain is for certificate subjects. 
So if you look at um, TLS search subject, uh, the first example here uh, for the this term is looking at the common name in the content. So you can just pick this one as a base. I'm not going to recreate this rule from scratch. Um, instead, I'm probably just going to grab the whole thing here or together. Um, I can't remember actually if we had any examples here. The TLS uh, in the rules file. Yeah, so this is TCP. All right. So let's do our rule, and then I'm going to paste this one in. So this is oh, something that I already have prepared when I solved the challenge, but this is the part with the search subject that you can just take from the documentation. This is what I did. Then the message that was requested, and here probably we don't need external net, so we can just probably go with any here. Um, any traffic that contains this one in the certificate portion by direction rule just to avoid that unpleasant surprise that we had previously it probably works with a single direction as well and that's it so really the only part that you need to copy and modify is this plus making sure that it's a TLS type of um, traffic that you're looking at um, all right the last rule that we need to write is again for HTTP traffic um, that could be cheesy compressed and it's for this string in JavaScript. So if we go back to the documentation here uh, for Suricata and we look for, so this is going to occur in the, well, probably in the response body, right? So we can look for the body part. Uh, there is an HTTP response body keyword. Um, no examples for this one, but it's very similar to the rules that were previously created. So let's do um, nano suicata rules. And this was the one rule to find them. And what I came up with is again the first revision of this, which is an extra space. We need to get rid of that extra space to have a nice and clean solution here. This is the content that we're looking for in the HTTP response body um, message and then HTTP any any. Um, here I'm checking just for this direction, probably here. Like I said, in the third rule, we don't need the bidirectional one, but there's more than one way to solve this challenge, of course. Let's save this. And once again, the only difference here is we're using this keyword and uh, the matching for the content that they asked us. And that's it. You uh, are able to solve the challenge like this. I believe if I click now on the snow rock. Mm, that we can see the thing here. Does not disappear. Maybe we have to do yeah to talk to the elf and uh it's will shout you shall not pass of course um giving us a reference to Lord of the rings but i'm still a firm believer that here because they were all network related this might as well be in the token ring to obtain anyways a uh, new piece of the story is going to be revealed here um First, with the bread kindly given, not sold, uh, and we have our objective completed. All the challenges here are fairly easy and can be done in probably within an hour <laughs> if you're an experienced uh, security analyst. I have to say that uh, for this challenge, um, I I do have some remarks uh, for the creators, so uh, let's wrap this one up. And I don't mean a negative feedback, and first it might sound like a negative feedback because these challenges I enjoyed probably the least 
But I do mean this as a compliment because these are very, very realistic ones. It's just that it felt like work. <laughs> but like I said, this is a compliment because if someone is very new to information security and maybe thinking about uh, moving into this space or switching from a job that they have in information security, for example, they were doing penetration testing and now they want to try themselves out as a security analyst. These are the kind of tasks that you have to do every single day as a security analyst. So that's why I said it felt a little bit like work, but uh, this is a good thing actually. So these challenges, very realistic. And hey, we got our first ring. So um, we're going to continue on our journey to obtain the second ring, which I'm just cheat a little bit. It's the Alvin ring, right? So that's it for this video. See you in the next one.